giving you a voice and making it loud our own way welcome, welcome to, to the fun. fun first updates now frc is produced in partnership with the blue alliance keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at the blue and by viewers like you we need your help to keep fun loud live and independent Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hey everyone, we're here at the start of week five. We've seen just about everyone's robots so far, and there's been a few surprises, a few locks, and a lot of fun things to recap, so let's get right into it. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Audrey. I'm Sam. I'm Ben. And I'm Connor. So, first up, we have a giveaway this show thanks to Redfish Robotics. Uh, we have some fun logo mugs. So let's bring on producer Tyler to talk more about what that is and how you can win. Yeah, Redfish Robotics is continuing to uh, give us even more mugs. So thanks again to them. That's not even, they're not even available on uh, Amazon yet. Uh, but this is your opportunity. If you're interested in winning, we're going to be giving away one during every <laughs> single show uh, today. So make sure you uh, get in on this. And if you're interested, all you have to do is type in Fun mug in the chat, uh, F U N M U G right now in the chat. We might change it up over the different shows, but fun mug is your opportunity to win. You do have to make sure you click that follow button to be eligible, or if you subscribe uh, through uh, uh, Prime or through a normal subscription, just like uh, Carl M two three eight did, they get five times chance to win. So good luck, everybody. Fun mug is the keyword for today. We'll draw near the end of the show. Nice. So let's start out our recaps with a regional in downstate New York. We've got Hudson Valley. Sam, can you start us off? First of all, that was very risky of you calling Hudson Valley downstate. Um, we'll talk about that on another show. I don't, I don't know about that one. It's right. below Albany. It's downstate. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. It's, <laughs> it's above New York City. Um, okay, so the Hudson Valley Regional attracted a nice mix of good teams once again, and the result was a very fun weekend. Throughout Qual's, Team 20 consistently had the top spot, with 1796 and 3314 the only teams even close. This came to a head in the second-to-last qual match of the competition, pitting 1796 against 20, essentially a battle for the top seed. In the end, Team 20's alliance squeaked at a four-point victory, putting 1796 in the second-place position. Going into alliance selections, it wasn't clear who Team 20 would pick, however. They decided to take 1796 into eliminations with them. This move brought 3314 in the second spot, who picked Team 303, the test team, to play with them. The second picks of both are quite interesting as well. The second alliance picked up a steal in 527 as their third pick, giving them three capable offensive robots, while the number one seeded alliance opted for a defense robot in 6401. There were no upset in quarterfinals, so in the end, there was a battle of mostly FMA alliance of 303 and 3014 and the New York alliance of 1796, 20, and 6401. Finals 1 was a relatively decisive victory, and although Finals 2 looks very close, with a difference of only three points, 13 of the, second of the Blue Alliance's points were for fouls, so it's really not quite as close as it seems. But overall, the event was definitely top-heavy as predicted, but I'm excited to see what the best of New York could do come champ, so I'm happy, you know, who qualified here. Big congratulations to 1156 on their second Chairman's Award and 6224 on their first EI Award. All right, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the Seneca event that happened this weekend. 35 teams went to the woods of southern New Jersey to play an FMA's 5th district event. Many teams had improved from the first go round, but not a single but no single standout powerhouse teams. Scores were slightly lower when compared to last week's Springside Chestnut Hill, but higher than the Bridgewater event during the same week. Gameplay mirrored that to which we've seen at other events with prolific use of the null hatch panel and scoring on the lower levels of the rocket. On the second day of competition, there were two unicorn matches, first in match 63, where 365 and 1807 worked together to complete a rocket and get the Have Three Climb again a few matches later, where 1807 worked with 1712 Dogma. 365 Mo had dramatic improvement from the first event, featuring improved hatch scoring and a level three climb. They selected Hatboro Horsham's number one pick, 1807 Redbird Robotics, and rounded out the alliance with 6921, the Technados. The number two alliance was also quite strong, featuring 834, Spartex, and 1640, Sabotage, and 6327, the Tin Soldiers. 
1640 featured a new quick level three climb for this event. For playoffs, 6327 had removed the ramp and replaced it with an elevator. Both the number one and number two alliances pushed through to the finals, taking down strong alliances featuring teams like 1712, Dogma, 18, or excuse me, 5895, Petty School Robotics, 2729, Storm Robotics, and 5684, the Iron Mechs. When they reached the finals, number two handled the defense better and ultimately took the win. Congrats to all the teams and to 75 for taking home the Chairman's Award. Hold on, back to 6327. They removed their ramp and replaced it with an elevator? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it took did. us like six weeks to build an elevator last year. How did they do that in one event? Hey, you, you know, you never know. Strange things happen at some of these events. <laughs> I guess so. So anyway, going down to Ride, Rhode Island District event. We had 29 teams go down there. That's Smithfield, Rhode Island. It was Team 78 Airstrike who would seat first and pick uh, uh, hold on a second, guys. Uh, I think I'm reading my week two notes here. My apologies. Um, <laughs> fun mug, by the way. Uh, oh, no, no, this is correct. All right. Just like the South <laughs> Test District event, 78 seated first and picked up 2168, the Aluminum Falcons. 4796, the Cyber Dragons would round off their alliance. Quarterfinal matchups, they lost their second match to the eighth seed but I'm pretty sure it's because 78 airstrike didn't move an inch. The number one seed would, would win the rubber match and advance to the semis where they face the number fifth seed of 1153, 1161. Matt, the number fifth seed was no match for the number one seed. It was one and three who would make it to the, who would make it to the finals and face off in the best of three. Number three seed was made up of 173 rage, 133 Burt, 5112, the Gongoliers, and backup robot 2713, I Raiders. Even though they went to a third match, the number one seed would become victorious on Planet Primus and blast off into deep space, presented by the Boeing Company. 2067 would pick up their sixth EI win, and 78 would pick up their seventh chairman's win. Now, chat, let's get some double gold cling bling for 78 Airstrike. 78 is so good this year. I love the robot. I think it's the best they've built Just like, a ever. Just a quick correction here. The uh, It was the number two blue lines facing off against one, not three. Oh, what? oh, my apologies. Okay. Well, over to our other New England event district this week. Uh, we've got the event that everyone was watching, the Cyber Knights. Uh, Team 195, who actually didn't seed first. They were third. They had two losses, which allowed Team 176, Aces High, and Team 230, the Gale Hawks, to seed above them, uh, rightfully so. They were absolutely incredible this weekend. Uh, the first ranked 176 then went on to pick 195 and round off their alliance with a robot that gained the advantage by playing defense, Team 6328, Mechanical Advantage. In the finals, the one seed faced off against the offensive power of 230 and 2370, and the defensive scrambling of 7153. In the end, it would be the number one seed that took the event with a score of 89 to 54. Very convincing. Uh, congrats also go to the Tech Tigers, Team 3654, for their first ever District Chairman's Award. Well deserved. I heard you guys do some great stuff. 28 teams came to the outskirts of Boston this weekend at the Greater Boston District event in Revere, Massachusetts. If you notice for this week for New England districts, there were three, which is why there's very, very small team lists. After a short set of 56 qualification matches, team number 5687, the Outliers, ranked number one, picking up 125, the Neutrons. Alliance one plowed through to the semis, where they would meet up against the five seed. They gave them a run for their money. The number one seed squeaked out two wins, just barely. In fact, that second semifinal match, they won by one point. That Ooh. is a slim margin, especially <laughs> in New England. It was one versus two in the finals. The two seed made up of 4909 Bionics, 1768 Robo Chiefs, and 6763 Fusion put up a stellar fight. They would have taken the W in finals match one if it wasn't for a missed level three had climb. In the end, it was the number one seed who took home the gold. 4909 won EI and 1721 won chairmans. In fact, this was 1721's first blue banner ever. Congratulations to them. Wow. Let's also get some double silver cling bling and chat for 4909 Bionics. 
All right, moving on to our discussion topic, we're going to talk about how 2017 and 28 or yeah, 2017 and 2019 compare to each other. Um, just in terms of strategy, how the game pieces work, and just overall match flow. I think, um, is that Ben? Are you starting it off? Yeah, um, I would say the the big thing that I noticed is similar between 2017 and 2019 here is you've got these big objects in the middle of the field that make it a little bit difficult for the drive teams to see around them, make it a little bit difficult for the audience to see through them. And it kind of creates a, a complicated aspect of match play where it matters what driver station you're stationed in. And uh, like basically to as you pick your cycles and where you put your robots. Um, I, I would say I don't necessarily like this aspect of the game. I wish first would consider maybe with some of these big, large game elements that they put in the middle, maybe make them more transparent, reduce the amount of field graphics. You can still make things look cool while still covering them in polycarb and everything uh, and make them useful um, and still be able to see through them. I think that there's some opportunity there that first could look at that to increase the value of these games. But that's one big thing that I noticed that's similar about them. It's just a big object in the middle of the field that you have to deal with. Uh, yeah, I got to agree with Ben on here. Um, what what I, I personally like 2019 over 2017. Um, more so, if if you look at the if you look at the theme and how the game is all played, and I, I have to I have to give credit to one of our mentors on 166 about this uh, insight. Um, if you if you strip the theme away from for deep space, the game still makes sense. You're building your own goal. But if you strip the theme away from Steamworks, it doesn't really make sense. Like, hey, you're gonna shoot balls here, and then you're gonna go hang things over the over here, and then climb. Um, I mean, both both fields were very aesthetically pleasing. I like this one a lot more, and it's more you can see the field a lot more. But they they do have some similarities. They have some differences for sure. And one of the big similarities with robot design that I've seen is there's a lot of Steamworks uh, ground intake style. Uh, for the hatch panels that we've been seeing a lot. Yeah, so I have two things here, which the game is pretty similar to each other. Um, the first is that we're seeing a very comparable level of um, one seeds winning events, uh, which is actually very low. Uh, 2017, it was because of the climbs, and 2019, it's also probably because of different climbs and different varying levels of defense and other things. But we're seeing um, much less one seeds winning than we saw last season. Um, second thing is that the meta was established in week one and it hasn't really changed. We're seeing two robots playing offense, one robot playing defense. And I mean, there's some switching strategy, like, you know, you go for this rocket, you go for this rocket and then we'll switch and then you put panels on whatever it's, the same thing every week. We haven't seen any evolution in it, just like 2017, where we saw, you do this big, you do this big, you do this big, all right, everyone, and then we're going to climb at the end or else we're going to lose. So, I mean, I'd like to see this game evolve, but I don't think it's going to happen. And I think that's a very similar thing to 2017. Yeah, I mean, I agree with all the points stated. Uh, first, of all, first of all, who here is called Hatch Panels Gears for half the season? Because I Me. know I've done that. I did um, that in my Behind the Bumpers video. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that, that, that right there. Um, but, you know, moving on to Ben's point, the whole fat lack of field visibility and the whole, you know, Driver Station 2 might be better than Driver Station 3, which is better than Driver Station 1. You know, what team can I get in either, though? That's the same as 2017 as well. And I really do not like that. I mean, the field elements in both years are already made out of mostly polycarb. And then they cover them in giant graphics, which will block any view mm -hmm. you have on the other side. It's just, I get it. They want to make them look cool. They want to keep up with their whole really obnoxious theme thing they've been doing since 2017 or 2016. But overall, I mean, there's, especially this field looks great. Just the rockets alone being covered and the middle part being mostly polycarb, I think would make a huge difference and the field would be much easier to see and it would look just as good. So I'd like them to, you know, not continue with that trend. Um, I think I agree with the meta. The meta is kind of the same. I don't see it changing too much. Um, but, you know, 2017, the meta did change at champs. Feel, feel mattered. Um, so, I mean, maybe we'll see the meta change a little bit um, towards champs. All right. So now we're going to cover who made the Northeast top 10 this week. So Tyler's going to bring up the slide here. 
And uh, while, while he waits, I'm going to tell you, it's um, we might see a few Mid-Atlantic teams miss it. Unfortunately, guys, you really got to go vote. Otherwise, you're going to miss the top 10 every week here. You got to you got to go vote. If you don't vote, you won't make the top 10. So it, it's uh, like those you know, scholarships. Apply, apply, I know, apply. Right? <laughs> apply, apply, apply. If you don't, you know, if you don't apply for grants, you don't get them. If you don't apply for, uh, you, you know, if you don't if you don't vote in the top 10, you, you won't see your region in the top 10. Sorry, guys. All right. Top 25, excuse me. Thank you, Tyler. All right, so now we're going to go who's in the Northeast Top 10. We got 195, the Cyber Knights, 5687, the Outliers, uh, 2168, the Aluminum Falcons, 78, Airstrike, 125, Neutrons, Team 20, the Rocketeers, 176, Aces High, 133, Burt, 173, Rage Robotics, and 1796, the Robotires. So what do you guys think about the Top 10 this week? So first off, I got to say, I'm really happy. There's uh, eight of these 10 teams are from New England. Um, <laughs> I, well, that's I just could, you. <laughs> I, yep, that's just me. Um, I, that's my opinion. Um, <laughs> and I am very happy with it. But um, no, I got gunning. My number one here is 5687, the outliers, uh, all the way up from up in Maine. Um, man, this team just keeps getting better and better every single year. They started off in 2015 with a wood bot and now uh, it took them two years to get to Einstein with 125 where they, they won their, they won greater Boston this past weekend. But you know, if 5687 doesn't win worlds within the next five years, I'm just going to quit that. That's, that's as simple as that. <laughs> uh, that's they, a hard uh, thing. To I, do, I don't man. think I bet on that. I'm yeah. Saying, don't need that. That's really <laughs> difficult. Oh, Come on, man. Well, you guys probably won't remember this in five years, but someone will. Uh, anyway, uh, you have a long memory. In 5687, they redesigned their cargo manipulator. Uh, they have no more uh, salad bowl, which seems to be really paying off for them. So uh, nothing but the best. And I'm looking forward to seeing them at District Champs later in April. All right, so let's move on to Audrey's hot take of the week. Should 195 really be ranked that high? Um, I think no. Um, if you think I'm wrong, um, type that in the chat. But sure, they've got tons of potential, um, but they really are not the best team in New England right now. There's a lot of other teams who currently perform better than them, like 78, 176. Um, they're performing better in competition and they're doing better with the game pieces in general. Sure, 195, by the time they get the champs, I could see them winning Einstein. But right now, I could think of a few other teams that should be at the top of that list. Uh, also, shout out to 1796. I love them. Um, they're like the 2791 Shaker Robotics of downstate New York. They're not well known outside their region, but, you know, they're really, really good. Yeah, I mean, they're coming off a couple Einstein appearances. I don't know why they're still in uh, the eighth safe spot on our list, but that, they're that the is what spot. it is. They're not even in the eighth spot. Oh, they're spot. in the tenth spot. How are yeah. they? Yeah, <laughs> vote, please, guys. Come on, please vote. Um, speaking of which, where is FMA? I just can't understand how there's not a single team. It's in Mar. FMA. What? FMA is in Mar. <laughs> oh, come Thanks. on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so that aside, <laughs> I just can't understand why teams like 303, 1640, and 3314 aren't on the list, let alone the fact that 1676 is fresh off a win at Waterbury over 176, who made this list. So, yeah, I just really don't see um, how you could leave off all of those teams from this list uh, while having eight New England teams there. So it just comes down to you know people voting. I, I don't see any other reason for it. All right. Yeah. And on my side, just to highlight some of the great FMA teams who missed the list, 1640 has two wins now that may be their best record ever. Someone correct me in the chat if I'm wrong at this point. Um, 1807's been picked first twice, lost in the finals twice. They're great robot. They're best they've ever had. Um, and then we've got the finalists, 3314 and 303 from Hudson Valley, who put in a stellar performance there and qualified for Worlds. So uh, great teams all around in FMA. Hopefully we'll see a bunch next week. So competition season is pretty much halfway over, and that's really hard to think about. It's going by really quickly. But uh, we got some awesome Week 5 events from the best region ever, of course. So, Sam, can you tell us a little bit about SBPLI 1 and 2? So, unfortunately, we have another year of two back-to-back -back SBPLI regionals uh, within the same week. So while the two regional in the same venue in the same week model isn't great for the hometown teams, the real beneficiaries, which I'm not sure if anyone expected this, are the international teams who can now play two regionals with the cost of one plane ticket. 
Because of this, SPPLI is hosting multiple teams from China, Turkey, Brazil, India, even a team from Norway. Long Island events are famous for a large, high ceiling, or yeah, l- low ceiling, high floor competition, and I see this year as no different, at least if you're in SPPLI 2. To start with SPPLI 1, we have a really thin list of the classic Long Island powerhouses. We have teams like 2271 coming off their regional win at FLR, 2875, who every year manages to be competitive, 1468, 2638, and 358, who are all very capable of building competitive robots, but aren't quite powerhouses, and well, that's it. From the outside of Long Island, we have Team 11, who's coming off two commendable district performances, 3646, who had a decent run in their hometown events, and well, yeah, that's that's it, that's it, that's all they are. I expect SPBLI 1 to be the weakest event we'll see all year in our region, and one of the weakest in the entire country, even when taking district events into account. Now, SPBLI 2 is a whole different story. We have all the normal top teams in Long Island, like 263, 329, 527, 870, 1796, 3171, and 3624, as well as visit from upstate powerhouses 30, 340 and 3015. Qualification average for this event is going to be head and shoulders higher than SPBLI 1, and I really expect a fun fight for number one seed. So Central Mass, this event has a few big names and a lot of top middle tier teams in NE right now. It's rather deep, but here's just some teams to look out for. Um, 78 airstrikes sitting at the top of district points right now. 125, 88, 95, 126, and 190. So we're going to see a lot of teams trying to lock in their district championship spots right here. So we got 40 teams going to uh, UNH district event this weekend. And we got some notables as 69, 319, 1058, 1073, and 1922. Uh, 319 is back at it again, looking for their second blue banner of the season after a dominating performance at Southern New Hampshire. You got 1058 looking to improve this weekend after a very early exit week two. And 1922 coming out of nowhere. Nobody saw them coming, just like John Cena. They look... They are looking for redemption as they come as they're as they're looking to be a, turn a finalist into a blue banner machine this year. So good luck to all teams competing. I will be drive coaching 166. Stop by and say hi. All right. So we have to cut this down. Sorry, FMA teams. I'm just going to highlight the teams that are good here from this that are playing this week. 25, 222, 225, 1403, 1676, 1923, 3314. And in Ben that was Montgomery at Ben Salem. We have 303, 1640, uh, 1807, 2607, and 5404. Lots of great teams, lots of uh, great competition coming in FMA. All right. So before we wrap up here, let's find out who won that mug. Tyler, who's the winner? Yep, I'm going to draw for the first mug here, and the winner is going to be uh, Jacob50128. Congratulations, Jacob. And Jacob is a subscriber, so you know what that means. Lots of red emotes in chat. Uh, but Jacob, make sure you reach out to me uh, with your information so we can get that mailed out to you. Congratulations. All right, so thank you, everyone that watched. If you want more FIRST Robotics in your life and you like what we do, all that you may ask is that you let others know about this show and that this is the place to go for FRC in their lives. If you got a few bucks to throw at us, we appreciate it, but if not, we totally understand. We're just delighted to have you here. On behalf of myself, Ben, Sam, Connor, and our producer, Tyler, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to stay tuned and keep updated with our new uploads because we've got some awesome Behind the Bumpers videos coming at you taken by our incredible floor crew, Nikki and Howard, over the weekend in FMA. Our next show will be the Sweet Tea Recap, and we'll see you next week on Nor'easter Region Recap. Hey. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.